What's up, YouTube? So we are back to build videos. Sorry it's taking me so long to get back to these, but a lot has been going on. And these videos take a little bit more time to put together. Basically, usually while I'm doing a project, I'm just trying to film as much of it as I can. Sometimes I don't successfully capture as much as I'd like to, and other times I do, and then I just go back and sometimes I do a little intro like this with some, uh, you know, some voiceover information to kind of give you as much of the build experiences I was able to capture and transfer in some sort of way. <laughs> and I wish they could be concurrent with the speed of the build, but that's just not possible in my situation. So the best thing I can do is sort of come back and talk about it. Now, because there's been a huge delay between what I've actually been able to get done and my ability to put out videos about it, I decided I kind of am gonna attach these attach attack these as subjects and hopefully by the time I kind of get done um, I'll be able to do a tour having attacked subjects as sort of separate things as much as possible and so I decided I wanted to focus this video on installing windows in the box truck now behind me you'll see I have some foam board and stuff none of this stuff has anything to do with what I'm doing today or talking about today these are some projects I'm finishing up on the ceiling the ceiling is the big thing that I'm working on right now to finish up because I need to get that done before I put the bed platform in Right now, I'm sleeping on the floor on a mattress, um, by the way. Uh, I do have my mattress. I'm keeping it covered in plastic until I get the actual bed platform up. Plus, I'm still doing things in here where it gets really dirty, so I'm trying to have the mattress as something comfortable to sleep on while not ruining the mattress um, before I actually get it sort of set in its permanent place. But like I said, not covering any of that in today's video. Today, we're talking about windows. So... This was the first window I installed. It's over the cab area, and eventually the bed platform will be built off the front of here. There was just a lot of work to do over here before I could start building a bed platform. And that's sort of the tricky thing of building, trying to figure out what you need to do first, second, third, and sometimes you make mistakes. Like, I wish I had finished the ceiling before I put the walls in, but I'm working around that problem, and that's subject for a different video. But Honestly, I winged it in this area. After I removed the piece of wood that was here, I basically had a metal wall that had metal ribs in it. Um, it wasn't really a problem. I could have left it a flat wall, but then I never would have got these shelves. I had not planned these shelves. This is just something I made out of the space once I discovered there was space for it over top the cab area where the cab and the box are joined now for those of you who don't understand and this is also true for school buses that are built on like ford and gmc chassises but i'm just going to talk about it in the world of box trucks because i know more about it but anyway basically ford chevy gmc etc they produce what's called a cutaway van and it's basically just like a van front, sometimes a truck front, depending on the size, and it has no back on it. No, no flat back, no pickup truck back, no box. And Ford will make that. I'm going to use Ford as an example, but it's basically everybody who produces um, cargo and commercial sized vehicles. They just produce that. And then another company, in this case, Marathon, in the case of my box, Marathon boxes are very common. You've probably just made, paid no attention to them, but people have noticed the word Marathon on the front of my box. Mickey, what are you doing? <laughs> He's jumping off of shelves right now. Um, but anyway, the 8x12 box that's put on the back of here is made by a company called Marathon. And those two things get slapped together and sent out to companies who buy them. Um, and the same thing goes for like those those flat bed trucks, um, tow trucks, like all of the actual chassises are the same chassis and then like some other company that produces pickup trucks or box trucks or whatever, or buses, then they take that front, that's the same front that they're gonna use for their vans and trucks and instead of putting their standard van or truck body on the back, just the head is taken and attached to the box or the 
the pickup truck or the dump truck or whatever. So a lot of times you'll see the front is a Ford E350 or something of that like, and the back is produced by another company that specializes in that particular thing, rather it's buses, box trucks, or whatever. Um, so if I, I was very familiar with the U-Haul box, to say the least. That's where all this is going. So I had no idea to expect this space. I thought once I took that piece of cardboard out, it wasn't cardboard, it was a piece of wood, but once I took that piece of wood out, I thought I was just gonna have a flat surface that I could cut a window into, and I was wrong. So we ended up having to cut through this metal, like, rib to actually get this first window in. What I will say is, it was way easier compared to the other two than I thought it was going to be and I thought this one was going to be the hardest window which is why I did it first <laughs> um, so there was that <laughs> um, so I was very wrong <laughs> and that was okay and I'm glad like if I'd done the other two first I might have been too scared to do this one and this one was the easiest one so it turned out to be good that this one was so easy and hi Mickey <laughs> <laughs> um, there's nowhere to go. What are you looking up for? Cat's over there being a cat. Let's, where is he? You can't see him now. Okay, he's hiding now. Uh, <laughs> that was a cat distraction. Uh, but anyway, like I said, this video, this video, this window turned out to be the easiest of my three windows. And... <laughs> It was, it was scary. I mean, it was kind of a big, this is the first major hole that I cut into the box truck and this is before I did both of my roof vents. And it was scary. I mean, like, I was cutting a significant hole. I was cutting into one of those uh, vertical ribs. These vertical ribs were there. This is actually metal that's covered in uh, contact paper that looks like wood. And it's just so I could put the wood fronts on there and it would all blend in. Uh, and it was scary cutting into these. But after I did it, it was so cool because I suddenly had this window and it was one of the biggest, like, immediate changes to the box truck. And I am absolutely 100% proud of it. But let's talk about those other two windows. So this was window number two and I did it with my friend Kiera. Um, right now I have this fan in front of it. It's nighttime, so I'm not going to open it up. Uh, but basically, my friend Kiera uh, came to the Home Depot parking lot, and we worked on this window, and I have some footage from that day. You know what's crazy when you're late to your own party? So I've decided to do the window install in the Home Depot parking lot. I'm back to old, reliable Home Depot parking lot. Um... Which, you know, I honestly have never been kicked out. And actually, I'm one unit over from the Home Depot parking lot because the Home Depot parking lot's kind of crowded, so it's really hard to just pull stuff out. Um, but usually, I just don't get bothered in this parking lot when I do construction work. <sighs> All right, it's time to start some work today. Got my friend here to help. She's hiding in her car right now. <laughs> so, we got two windows to install. You have all the carpentry skills or none of the carpentry skills. <laughs> and we're going to see what happens. As you heard, I started out the day with some very lofty ideas about getting both windows done. By both, I mean the little window on the passenger side and the large window that was going on the driver's side. So basically, I asked if Kiera could make the templates for both of those windows while I worked on clearing out the box truck. So the first window didn't have a ton of variables to it. I mean, I wish I had set it a little higher, but mostly I knew it was gonna be in the center of that front part. But now that I was on the side of the box, you were basically lost on the outside as to where you were on the inside. So I used a piece of cardboard that Kiara made as a template to figure out where the window was gonna live on the inside of the box. 
and trace that out and make sure I was satisfied with it before we started work on actually cutting the hole from the outside of the box. Unfortunately, the camera wasn't running when I did it, but I poked a couple of guide holes through the wall of the truck with a drill so I knew where the top of the window had to go. And then I basically lined up the template on the outside with those holes and then traced the design out on the outside of the truck because I was gonna be cutting from the outside of the truck with the jigsaw. Before you cut a very large hole, small holes can always be filled. It's always good to check your work again, so I got another perspective on the window from the outside of the truck. Once I was kinda happy with what I'd set up, I used the drill to set myself a couple of more holes that I could get a jigsaw blade through before I started cutting the whole thing out. Then it was time to get out the jigsaw. For the top and bottom cut of the shape of the window, it was easier just to do those from the inside of the box and then I was gonna go to the outside of the box to do the sides um, because of how the window was positioned between those two metal uh, vertical rib areas. It was just the easiest and safest way to do it for this one. And with the piece of metal out, it was time to fit the window in. So I know it seems like, oh, you're done. Not quite. First of all, we had to adjust the hole a little bit. Second of all, I needed to set up some wood framing on the inside of the window for the screws to bite into 
properly. Um, I had to put some sealant around the inside of the window, namely some butyl tape. I also used butyl tape on the front window. Um, so there was a lot more taking the window out of the hole, putting the window back in the hole. And my lofty ideas that I was going to get two windows done in one day quickly went away, basically. Also, it fit between those two metal ribs, but barely. And so it ended up kind of being an awkward situation to finalize this little window. But in the end, we got her done and my box truck officially had two windows. All right, so we got the window in and it got a little bit harder than we thought. Kind of screwed up the whole, <laughs> what'd you think of the whole process? It went good. <laughs> She's being nice. <laughs> it went terrible. <laughs> but it's okay now. I do need to put some more sealant on the window. So remember how I said cutting a hole in your vehicle, box truck, van, trailer, whatever, is going to be one of the scariest things you do? I stand by that. And we messed up. Basically, we cut the hole too big. <laughs> uh, and... It, it, um, but it didn't start that way. It started too small. And then as I began to honestly wing adjusting the window in my overconfidence, it got too big. <laughs> um, so I ended up having to basically... Caulk, uh, between caulk and basically some metal... Uh, how do I put it? Filler. I was able to take care of the problem. It wasn't humongously too big. There was literally one corner where there was like a little bit of extra space. And so I put extra sealant around it, but I also used some of the metal that we cut to sort of patch that area and, and seal it all together and then seal the whole thing up. So it's a good thing for your hole to be too small because that means you can just make minor adjustments. And most of the time, to do a window, you're only going to need two tools. And that's a drill and a jigsaw. And that's to cut your hole. And that's the scariest part. I would say if you can afford it and you're not confident in your cutting skills, it's not a bad idea to, like, hire someone to do the cutting for you. And if I'm sweating a lot, it's because I don't have any fans on right now because I'm trying to record and those would be noisy. Uh, but... If you can afford to have somebody else just cut the hole for you, like take your vehicle to a shop, you know, let them know you have your window, let them have the size, and let them cut the window for you. It's not a bad deal to just have them cut the hole. Because the installing of the window is actually pretty easy once the hole is correct. You butyl the window, which is what I did for all three of my windows. I used butyl tape. Uh, you set the window into the hole. You have a framing mechanism that usually goes on the inside. You can't see it anymore because everything's framed out and the wall's over it. And I did my window when I still just had a metal wall. And um, so you put your framing mechanism on the inside. You have your window on the outside. It's good to have two people so that you can balance those two things happening. You screw it in from this side. You put on some extra seal if you're worried about leaks. And then the rest of it is good to go. Um, none of my windows have leaked since I put them in. I have ex had a couple of experiences with rain, and right now nothing is leaking. Everything seems fairly sealed up. Uh, so yeah. Now that you've seen footage of window number two, let's talk about window number three, which Ashley helped me with. So window number three is a big window. It is also an emergency exit window. Hopefully I have footage of that to throw in. See if I can improve the lighting in here. Lighting kind of sucks. Oops, don't do that. There we go. I don't know if that's any better. I think that might be slightly better. Yeah, I have this little bar of light right here. Charges by USB. I usually do charge it during the day and then use it at night. Um, just so I'm not using my plugged in lamp. Because obviously I want to use the most power when I'm actually getting power, which is during the day. But the big important thing that came today, which is why I'm recording this, is my last window. Now I do have another, sorry, knocked something over. 
I do have another small window that's in storage. It kind of looks like the other one except in the other orientation. So there's nothing special about that one. But this one is a little bit special. So I'm going to kind of open this. Where are my keys? Or anything sharp? It's a bit sharp. So, eh. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Doop. Bang. windows have come in such variables the first window thank goodness it wasn't broken but it was not packed well it was only packed around cardboard there was no type of insulation material the small window is gonna go over on this wall um, was packed really well in bubble wrap I could tell it was quality it actually came with mountain screws which this window I did not it did not have mountain screws I got it off of that one off of Amazon and I went back and looked at reviews and some people got screws and some people didn't which shows you the quality of the window. <laughs> the eBay window was actually a really nice window so I take back what I said. I think I said it wrong in my other video. I don't remember. But the eBay window was actually a nice. It was wrapped in bubble, bubble wrap. It was, well I haven't installed it yet. <laughs> it was wrapped very carefully. It does have its own seal on it. But I'm kind of iffy about it and I think I might add some extra sealing on that window anyway just because I don't want any leaks. And that's another problem. I can't really leak test any of my stuff. So I need to find somebody with a hose or like I can't really go to a regular car wash because I'm too tall. But I actually do need to leak test all of my seals especially before I start putting insulation in here. But let's keep going and show you guys this window. This is, oh my goodness. This window came with butyl tape. I'm going to have so much leftover butyl tape, guys. And, okay, but this wasn't great, though. It kind of smashed the screws against the butyl tape, and it's kind of stuck to the butyl. Um, also, I don't know how much I like this butyl compared to the butyl that I have. But it's extra butyl tape. So, now I have, like, three rolls of butyl tape. This is packed in styrofoam. I don't like that. It looks like some of the butyl got on here. Actually, some of the butyl got on the window, which is not cool at all. Yeah, not cool at all. Ew. Yeah, a piece of the butyl tore off and is on the window. It's, it's, and there's like putty. So this was already, this is already having problems. There's like butyl all over the place that I have to clean off this window. But what this window costs, I'm a little upset um, about this. I'm not sending it back because it doesn't really harm the long game of the window. But there it is. So this window is going about right here. So that'll be facing outside. This will be facing inside. This is just styrofoam. That's not a big deal. But there is like a streak of butyl right here that I'm going to have to clean off. And so I'm going to have to look up how to do that. Um, but why this window is important is I really wanted an escape window. I'm going to put that to the side. This is just the... This is the thing that goes on the inside to attach to the window. Mickey is really creeped out by it right now. He just woke up. Okay, it works. That's good. Okay, so this window is basically an escape window, which is what the big deal is. There's two little red latches here. Those latches are on the inside, and you can only see the word exit from the inside. So somebody from the outside wouldn't be able to figure this out. But on the inside, it's clearly marked as an exit window. Basically, I'm holding it upside down 
it would be the other way, but this whole window can hinge open so you can escape out of it when these two red latches are released. When the latches are down, you have your normal stuff, you have a, a piece of glass that you can raise, and then you have a nice big screen window, and again, this window is going right there. Um, so basically it has two little latches on the side so you can push the window fully out and be able to climb fully through this if you need to need to and that was intentional because I wanted to make sure there was a, a second egress as they call it from within the box and not just dependent on going from the box to the cab because I wasn't 100% sure how DMV would feel about that for the conversion to RV process so even though it's not like an in out regularly used exit to have an emergency exit window was kind of important to me and so that's why I got an emergency exit window for this area. And so the table here flips down. Eventually I'm going to have high enough bar stools that I can sit at it without looking ridiculous. Because right now I sit on the fridge and it's a little low. But the seating that I'm planning to have here will be high enough um, that I can sit at this table at a reasonable height. This is going to be for eating. It's going to be for desk work. I can also stand at it as a standing desk. Um, once the whole structure is built around it, it will make much more sense uh, than it makes right now. Because right now it's a floating table over my mattress on the floor. Uh, but let's not even talk about this table. Let's talk about this window. All right, another day, another project. Ashley's here again. Yay. Ashley's been vaccinated. I am still not. <laughs> so basically, I am going to be putting in the largest window, which is scary because it's literally just such a huge hole to cut into the box truck. But by the way, guys, I do have a lock on this. Everybody's always freaked out about this. I do have a lock on this. You can't just walk up and flip it open. And you still have to get this thing out the way before you do that. So it's pretty difficult. All right, let me get to work. If you want to pop up here, I'll show you my, my spot. <laughs> especially since we're talking about the inner part, we're not talking about the outer part coming this way. Right. Uh, guesstimated, I'm gonna trace it from the outside, but maybe I'll put a little pallet hole here just for to mark the top of it. But I've guesstimated it'll go from about here to here and be in between these two. I'm gonna hand you this window. This is basically an escape window. So like if in an emergency, I needed to jump out of a window, that's the only one I could jump out of because I'm not fitting out of that one. <laughs> that one. Um, once you put a hole in, that's it. All right. So using Kiera's template that she had done when I'd done the previous window, we began to set the large window on the other side of the truck. At the time, I did have those black ladder hooks there. They were cheap pieces of crap and have since been removed. But anyway, back to the window. Um, maybe because both Ashley and I work sort of tech theater and have done so together. But I feel like when we get into a project, we get into a really decent groove rather quickly when it comes to working together. So that's always kind of cool. So 
So there's a lot of taping the window template up, taking it off, making sure it's where you want it, drawing lines, adjusting lines. But eventually you have to commit to cutting that hole. And so finally I did. Um, I was a little nervous after the trouble I'd had with the hole on the other side, but I trusted, I committed, and this time I remembered to tape out the hole with masking tape with Ashley's help. I meant to bring painter's tape and I forgot and I left it in the storage unit when I went to pick up supplies. At some point you have to commit and so I did. So with the window taped out, I began to set the basically corner holes that I would guide the jigsaw blade into and we were ready for next steps. So along the way, I did tape up the sections that I cut, but the masking tape did not hold very well as far as kind of helping out a little bit with vibration as you cut more and more of the hole. And it was a rather big hole. As scary as it is to make the cut, when the metal finally comes free, it is the best feeling in the world because like the potential of your window is there. Of course, you haven't started the annoying part of actually fitting the window in and making adjustments and all that, but there's still a lot of satisfaction in that moment. He's like rubbing himself on the window like, dude, why am I in here? Believe me, you're gonna love this once it's installed. You love your windows. Ashley actually has much better carpentry skills than I do when it comes to, I don't know, just measuring and cutting. Um, I just feel like she makes less mistakes and can cut a better straight line. Fastening stuff together, getting it in place, great at it. Hate the measuring and cutting part. Um, so I asked if she could just do the framing that I need to put around the window on the inside while I did some cleanup things, including filing down the window and, uh, you know, getting the edges ready to receive the window for its final setting. Once everything was all ready and adjusted and tweaked and measured out, it was time to put butyl tape on the outside edges of the window. Um, butyl tape, even though I used it in all my windows, I haven't talked about it much. And it's basically like a putty tape, sort of sealant thing. Um, and it goes around the edge of the, your window and some of it, might push out even once you tighten it you just you know go back the next day and do a little bit of cleanup on it not a lot actually did but i'd seen on a, another video that that might be a thing but basically it's a putty tape that you just run around the edges and then before you stick it in a hole you remove that protective film and you just push it into the hole and it should provide a seal around the edge of the windows
So me and Ashley installed another window. We need to start a business called Install Your Windows. Not really. Nobody should trust us to install windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so today it was supposed to rain, and it just started to rain, and I'm so excited. Because now I have not one, not two, but three windows in, and both of my roof vents. So this will be a good test. Um, it's supposed to rain pretty much all day. If I don't see any evidence of water coming in, that means we're water tight. I mean, I still want to do my own little test with like a hose and go over it, but this is a great natural weather conditions test. It rarely rains out here, so I'm just excited to kind of put the box truck to the test, especially now that I've cut all kinds of holes in it. Um, and we want to make sure water's not going to get in. And they're all sealed up properly, you know. So let's let today happen. So basically with the side window, this window, it happened again. We cut the window too small. I don't know how. The front window, it was it was so perfect. There was like this much of off and we literally just shaved it down with a file and the window popped right in. Um, so like it was slightly imperfect but it was mostly perfect. I don't know if our cardboard cutouts for these two windows were just off and that's why it happened with both windows but the hole started out too small and in trying to adjust it, it then got too big. Uh, so it, it, I again had to employ the same methods I'd done with the other window. Now the interesting thing was when I recruited Kiara because the first window had gone gone so smooth, I was ready to knock out two windows in one day. And I, that did not happen because after the first window and having to adjust and trying to find a way to seal the hole after we had one corner that was just a little bit too big, it, it was just, it was frustrating. <laughs> Um, and there was no way I was going to try another window and I was not going to do a window by myself. So I had to wait for a day when I could put the window in. Now I will cover this more when I get to putting the walls up. But the next tricky thing about these windows was when it came time to put in the walls, I had to work around the windows and so like that was tricky for measuring because like you know you had to get the distance to where the window starts and then have put in the dimensions of the window and these are actually full panels um that run out at a certain point um so i think if i remember correctly i can't even tell where they overlap now uh these are only three panels they just look like uh what in the wood slats they're not it's three siding panels uh, that look like wood slats and so we had to cut gaps for the window but also account for the dimensions as they fell into the space and so that thing was interesting honestly it was a little rough in a couple of places um I don't know how that happened. Maybe it was just the way the, the wood squeezed into the place. And then I basically went back and I did these little white frames that are around the window. Uh, right now I have, I had half of a curtain and that half of curtain got turned into curtains for all three of these. I, these are blackout curtains, by the way. And um, when I gave away my Jackery 1000, I was lucky enough to meet Paulette. So I was hanging out in like one of my favorite spots to just chill at during the day, mostly because I get great sun, which you can probably tell but from the glare <laughs> in, the, in the camera screen. So I'm just sitting in my box truck right here or chilling and I hear somebody say, Dawn, I follow you. You see me looking real, <laughs> real, real crazy. So over here <laughs> is local van dweller. Paulette, hey. Hi Paulette. And also Paulette was saying, I can't wait to buy a Jackery one day. I'm really thinking about buying a Jackery. And then I went in my box truck and I gave her my Jackery 1000. Oh my God. <laughs> what this looks like is a really cool van. She has a cool like flip up counter right yep, here I, I did to all expand of her myself. space. She's been using this for power. So I think the Jackery is a little bit of an upgrade. <laughs> I mean, what this is great. I am familiar with this. This is a Ryobi yeah. battery and you basically just 
turn it on and you have USB ports and a plug. I don't know how many watts this is, but I'm sure the Jackery is more watts. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> So, yeah. This wallpaper right here is what I'm thinking actually about doing in my box truck. So, I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you. Your water system is like super simple. And you said you got most of this from. Um, I got the cabinets from Habitat for Humanity. Both of these full cabinets are. Um, they were $10 for both of them, I think. 10 or 15 No more than 15 Dang, that's awesome. Yeah. 10 or $15. Yeah. And yeah. you got all the furniture you yeah, need. Yeah, I just came back from um, traveling across the country. So, my van is a little cluttered right now I haven't taken things out but yeah it's a DIY all the way I love it I got the same van Chrome has <laughs> without the barn doors with the sliding door instead but you have yeah. cool artwork on the side of you <laughs> yeah so I painted over my dents <laughs> I painted over my dents that's all that's all that was I said I'd do a hippie theme on the side over yeah but yeah thank you so much well, That's you're awesome. you're welcome, and yeah. you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel. I do. I actually have the channel. It's all set up there. It's called, it's going to be called Sweet Peas Adventures, and then Sweet Peas is uh, S W E E T P E A Z Adventures. And so, um, I'd love to start, you know, filming and stuff. It's all set up and ready to go. I just I need to hit publish. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just given her the two panels, and you're going to help me out and trim up my jacked up looking oh, okay. curtains. Yes. <laughs> all right that's just part of the journey it is and so she offered to do my curtains and she took them and had them back to me by the end of the day which i was entirely shocked about because i was like planning on having to like do something else while I was waiting for her to get back to me and she got back to me like by the end of the day so by that night I was able to put my curtains back up and basically all she did was hem them because I kind of just went across them with the scissors and cut each piece to size to fit each window sort of um and she basically just hemmed them and cleaned them up she wanted to make me all new curtains but I didn't even honestly know what I wanted and these were working just fine so I was like can you just hem them for me and then I had to figure out what I wanted to do for curtain rods. So none of my curtain rods are actually the same. This is a bungee cord that was too long, but everything else I had was too short. So for the big window, I just have this bungee cord that's extended over top these shelves and goes through the curtain, which unfortunately has gotten a couple of stains. Like this is some... Uh, some of that spray foam that comes in a can that leaked. I put that in a couple of gaps and like an idiot I didn't cover my curtains and then this is I forgot what these things are called But they're really bendy gear ties and so when the curtain is up I honestly just wrap this gear tie around it to hold it up and then I unwrap it at night and the curtain just falls It's a really simple solution Not overly complicated. You can also see where unfortunately I have some paint stains right here and some foam so like the box truck is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but this was just a really simple solution to get the curtain up. So right here above my oven stove, which is looking a little rough and worse for wear, it's fallen a couple times. This is the bad thing about living in something while you're building it out. If you're using the stuff, um, it, it gets worn. So I'm not, when the build is done, it won't be brand new. It'll be very beat up, but that's not what we're here about. So here's our little window. Again, it's framed out in the exact same way as the other window on the other side, um, with this, uh, wood that's painted white. And this is a bungee cord as well. It's some of those rubberized ones. I took the hooks off of this one and I screwed through the wood here. I used to have the hooks on it and I used to have a different bungee cord here. This one I changed out because I wanted it to be black just so it kind of blended in with what was going on as opposed to this green bungee cord I was using for a while. And also once I had this box, I had something to sort of frame it inside. This curtain is actually too long. Now, if I take it out the window, it hangs all the way down there. So it's not perfect, and I don't like that. So usually what I do, as you saw before, I don't want to reveal myself to the street, but this street, I'm not too worried about it where I'm parked. But I usually just kind of tuck it in the window. It doesn't look as good as it did look like five minutes ago. 
So this one has, it's actually, it's, this is like a tool holder thing that you're supposed to hook to your belt, belt loop and then you can put your wrench on it. And I haven't used it in a while and it's black so I ended up turning it into the curtain rod over here. Again, we basically just have something for that to hook into both ways. And I used to push this over, but it didn't really work very well and it always looked unbalanced. And after I put these shelves here, I didn't want to do that. I wanted some way to roll it up. So again, we have a gear tie here that's just hanging out. And when I want to roll up the window, I just tie it up with the gear tie. This one's also a little long, like it could be a little bit shorter so it fits a little more. But it's not as bad on length as the one in the small window. This little ducky right here. Um, Ken, who uh, gave me the Chevy Express van, this was in the Chevy Express van. So this little guy, he just came over to the box truck with me, sort of as a memory of Ken's kindness. So that, my friend, is a catch up on basically how it's been going with windows, installing the windows, having curtains for them. The story of my windows, basically. The first one was incredibly smooth by comparison to the other two. And even though I messed them up, I was able to fix them in the end. And they've been great ever since. I haven't had any leaks of note. So the good thing is, you can mess up and it'll be okay. But it's gonna be scary. Like, if you get a vehicle with no windows and you want to put windows in it, I don't care if it's a box truck or a step van, or a regular old cargo van, it's going to be a little bit scary. Some way to mitigate that scariness, like I said, is to go to a shop, let them cut the hole, like bring your window, bring your window template, whatever it is, and then let them cut the hole, and then all you're responsible for is installing the window. Especially if you're like me, and you feel like you just have trouble cutting uh, a straight line. And then the first window made me overconfident. The second window took away my confidence, but I really wanted this last window in, and so I just had to recruit a good friend and push my way through it. And I'm really happy about having them now. Like, it's hard for me to remember being in this box without these windows and my ceiling fans, which were also scary. So I would say my five scariest holes is my three windows and my two roof vents. I already did a video about the roof vents. I'll try to put up a card here so you can check that out if you want to. And I don't know what the next video is going to be about, but it is going to be a general covering of the build process, how I got where I am today, and sort of looking back at what's already happened and talking about updates on that. I.e., I talked about installing the windows, which happened a while ago, and I've caught up on some current things like the curtains, um, the framing of the inside of the windows, and if you guys have any questions specifically about the installing of the windows, because it really is hard to go back in time a little bit, um, feel free to leave those in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. I don't know if it's going to be a build video. Don't get mad at me if it's on another subject. All right, see you next time. So just so you know, Patreon and YouTube memberships do get concurrent updates to the van as they happen. They basically get it usually in the form of a photo posted to Patreon or YouTube memberships. The van, the box van, the box truck. I haven't decided. I switch between van and truck when I'm talking about the vehicle. But the thing is, it takes like two seconds to take a picture. It takes much longer to edit together a video. And since I was working a show in Oakland, I did not have a lot of time to sit down and um, edit things together. Like I would, every all of my free time was basically spent trying to get the box truck built and film as much of it as I could while I was doing it and running around doing all kinds of errands in between that. So I'm looking forward to jumping back into these videos and sharing sort of how I got where I am with you guys. See you in the next one.